Hi, um, I just wanted to do a video about Korea and um, something that um, is quite dear to me. This is my career, obviously, being an artist. Um, I went to the NEC last week in Birmingham and it was about, um, it was a show um, about careers and I, I was talking to quite a few uh, students, people going into, you know, choosing a career and stuff and I thought it'd be quite a good idea to do a video and then answer some of these questions and pretty much talk about the same things as I did there at the show and um, to you that might be watching might be thinking, hey, I want to be a a full-time artist, um, how, how I could go about it and stuff. So I'm going to try and answer a few questions. Um, before I go into this, I'm going to talk about my own uh, personal career and route and all that stuff. And then I'm going to try and not get a bit too confused or whatever, so that's why I wrote a few points. Um, okay, so I've been doing this for quite a few years. I studied um, art in um, in a college back in France, um, it's called college. It's not quite the same as in America or here in the UK. Um, it's kind of in between school and college sort of thing. Um, I got a diploma in um, sort of graphic de graphic design and uh, sign writing, as a, as well as um, it was kind of a general mix um, of of art, and there was um, there was quite a few. Quite a few things, quite a few subjects that we um, that we learned, and um, it was kind of um, it was kind of a good idea to to go to that school because we had three teachers in, with different different sort of subjects, and uh, and then after that you sort of went on your own and then studied some more. Well, I just did two years and then I moved to the UK and then I kind of did my own learning by myself. Uh, nowadays with YouTube, it's just Amazing! You can learn so many things by, you know, professional artists, professional singers, actors, whatever. And um, a lot of it is free. And it's not so much that it's free; it's the fact that um, you can learn the very best by people that are doing what they're doing. Say, an airbrush artist, you may learn from the very best. If you're going to a university, um, teachers are going to hate me for saying this, but if you're going to a university, you're going to get the knowledge of that teacher and it's only going to take you so far it's kind of cool for some general general um, knowledge anyway uh, I had one of my teacher uh, Miss Greppy and she was really passionate about art and, and and the way she was teaching you know you could really feel it and um, and I learned a lot of things with her like to to use the primary colors uh, to you know a bit about um, computer drawing and all that stuff so these are things that I use pretty much every day. As far as the diploma itself, I destroyed it last year. I was just tidying up the workshop and I thought, why am I keeping on, why am I holding on to this piece of paper? It's worthless. You know, people either want to hire me or they don't, or buy a canvas or they don't. Um, so this type of career, whether you're trying to be an artist, an actor, a singer, all these not real jobs kind of thing, um, you have to take, you have to approach them with an open mind. Okay, so basically, um, I studied, that was about 20 years ago or something, so I studied that, moved to London, um, and then I was going to the museums all the time, drawing from the, the sculptures. Um, I used to draw graffiti back when I was at uh, college as well. I was always doing it on paper and stuff, and then did it in the street uh, with some friends. And then, yeah, it's just kind of, I kind of like the, the street art approach more than the graph approach. Um, and then did loads, loads of different things. I did body painting. I did um, I had a different name, Mr. Shiz. Um, I was doing body painting. I was doing props, um, street art, all that stuff. And then it got to an airbrushing. And it got to the point where I was like, okay, I'm going in all directions. Let's just pick one. So that's why now I'm a bit more focused on what I, in what I find, in, in what I'm doing. The reason I'm going into that is because I'll... Um, touch that point in a second. Cool, so that's my career. Um, I travel mainly in the UK and also in Europe, a little bit around the world, not yet that much, but I do travel uh, for my work and I work for all sorts of companies, uh, big, small, you know, 
I'm looking at my camera, Sony, um, Microsoft, and also, you know, private, uh, private people, um, shows, parties, you name it. It's custom work, so it's pretty much anywhere. Um, I'm trying to remember the questions that people ask me, so that's why I'm saying all that. Um, what else was it? Um, yeah, and I think most of the questions that people had, people had were, um, okay, that's cool. That's what I want to do. How do I go about it? So that's what I'm going to go into now. First step, you have to realize, you have to decide what you're passionate about and what is the thing that you really, really love doing. I'm not saying how good you are. I'm just saying, what do you love? And sometimes people sort of sway you in different, in certain directions, and that can be quite dangerous. I love art. I love creating. I love, you know, if I go on the beach, after 10 minutes I get bored and I start sculpting in the sand or something. I just need to, you know, I can't. It's not just the brushes and it's not just the money that you make from all that. I, I don't care. Yeah, it's cool, of course. But I just want to create, you know. I, if, I get, if I get a million pounds tomorrow, I'll just be, I'll just have more supplies. <laughs> I'll have more spray cans, you know, I'll be painting in bigger walls and whatever. But I'll still be doing this because I love it. And maybe some of the mediums I won't like anymore. I might not like to use spray cans for years. Maybe I'll use something else. But I always want to create and that's my passion. So first, find out what you're passionate about. Maybe acting, maybe science, maths, whatever it may be. Find out what you want to do and do that. Um, and also if you a very very good pianist and everybody's like oh my god you're just the best pianist we've ever heard you're gonna do great but you really want to be a dentist then just pursue that you know just listen to listen to yourself because of course it'll work for a while it worked for 10 years 20 years and eventually you're gonna do something else so always think of this not with this when you're making um important decisions Okay, yeah, so very important, you don't have to be good at it. When I started, I was really, really bad, really, really bad. Um, obviously, I'm always improving, and uh, but when I started, I was just, yeah, I was really bad. But I loved it, so I did it. So find what you love. Second step, say you decide to be an artist. Um, there are two different avenues of being an artist. You can be... The type of artist which I've been for years, uh, which is a custom artist, somebody comes to you and say, I want you to paint my car, I want you to paint my wall, I want you to paint me a canvas, I want you to paint me that. So they come to you with, with a request, I want this painted like that, in these colors, and whatever, in that country, whatever. And you do that, uh, you respond to a demand. Or you can do the traditional way, which I'm only going into now after many years of doing custom work. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> and that is to do normal canvases, uh, which is you do, uh, you, do, you do some artwork, whether it's sculptures, canvases, whatever, and then you sell them. Um, I'm doing both because I would get bored if all of it was canvases and, and those type of artwork. But at the same time, if all you do is custom work, um, it's extremely tiring. It takes a lot of, um, a lot of energy, a lot of pressure, a lot of, you know, you're, always out, you're often outside, especially if you're using spray cans. Um, so I find for me, it's kind of cool to do both. Have a look. You may want to do one, the other, or both as well. So... Uh, yeah, see, see what you may like. Oh, yeah, this is what I was talking about, the other things I do as well. Um, I had some of the students saying, well, I like art, but I'm not too sure what. If I want to do oil, if I want to do spray can, if I want, you know, if I want to do airbrushing, markers, whatever. And my answer is try everything. That's what I did. I mean, I painted with everything, you know, watercolors, oil, acrylic, spray cans, airbrushes, body paints, sponges, rollers, every single thing and then by doing that you're like okay i really don't like this i kind of like this i love this you know and then you just use those things and then give you a bit of an idea of, of where you should go number three uh okay so say you want to pursue an artist career 
if you're an actor or whatever and you want to do that, feel free to watch the video, but this is going to go maybe for artists now. The first thing you want to do is create a name. Once you've got a name, okay, your name can be your real name, a nickname, a company name, whatever you want to choose. But if I can give you an advice, which you can feel free to follow or not, is to stick to it. At Mr. Shiz and I, um, uh, I built uh, a following out of this and then I worked for loads of companies and did all of that and then I realized, you know what, the name is not really suitable anymore, I'm going to use my real name because I didn't just want to do graph and street art, I wanted to also do what I do now, which is uh, street art, uh, traditional stuff and, you know, murals, all that kind of stuff. Using my real name allows me to do anything and it's just, I'll just like it better. But I've got to start all over again. So um, when you find a name, when, when, when you're looking for a name, try and find a name that will withstand the, the time, you know, um, find something that you're going to be happy with. Obviously you may change, but it's going to, you know, you're going to have to start again. So try and find a name that you are likely to, to, to like for a long time. Step four, um, get set up. Now this is fairly easy. You need a website, you need some social media, and you need a business card. You can do all of these things for free. However, I recommend you don't do all of them for free. Um, create a website. You don't want to get... Uh, WordPress is a really good platform. Uh, since I switched to WordPress, it, I just found it was um, really, really useful. Um, Wix, uh, not really a fan, and Weebly and Webs and all that stuff, because... Um, it's kind of, they got loads of kind of keywords and stuff, and I don't know if it messes with your ranking and stuff. Um, but I think WordPress, Squarespace, and these are the platforms that don't, they're just like, uh, you put all your keywords, you put all your stuff, and then the better you do, you know, the, the better you're going to rank. But they don't put all their own keywords in, in the mix. Not 100% sure about this. Uh, as far as the, the technical, the, the user-friendly sort of thing with um, with words, WordPress, it's pretty cool. Tons of um, helps, tons of help videos on, on YouTube again. It's pretty good. Um, so you can get that for free at WordPress.com, or you can get a hosting package with your own name. Uh, my name is my real name, OlivierRubio.com. It does sound better than WordPress.com forward slash your name. So pay for that, it's only $20 or whatever, and the hosting, when you start, it doesn't have to be massive, so it won't be that much, but I do recommend uh, paying for that. Business cards, again, you can get them for free. Vista prints, I think do them for, uh, do some for free or whatever, but get some, uh, get some made. Um, I'm in the UK right now, I'm using, I'm plugging everybody. <laughs> I'm using Moo, because uh, I kind of like the, um, Always have business cards on you, by the way. I kind of like the, the square format. It's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, I go with them. Um, they're not that expensive. Uh, they do small amounts, but they look cool. So you want to get something that's, that's um, good quality as well. So pay for that. Social media, I would recommend getting only a few. So get the ones that would work. If you're an artist, Instagram is obviously a really good one. Um, you may want to flicker or 500px or something. I hate Facebook, so I'm not gonna recommend that at all. Twitter, Do does anybody know the point of Twitter? Um, get the ones that, um, that will work for you, but only get maybe three. I mean, I've got, um, I've got a website, Instagram and YouTube, and if you're gonna do them properly, um, you can't have too many, if you got 10, and you've got this amount of hours, and you're going to have to split it in 10. If you've got the same amount of hours, and you're going to split it in 3 or 2, or even just one social media, you're going to do it really well. Um, otherwise, you're going to have to have a lot of time dedicated to social media, and you can't just have loads of time for your social media. You also need to work on your skills, you need to work on other aspects, which I'll go in into a minute. So maybe just have 2 3, Maybe four, but not that much. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. Right. Now the big one. Now that you got your name and you got all these platforms or whatever to plug it, 
Well, you gotta do this plugin in. It's basically, uh, you could think of it as a fire. You know, you want to grow, if you, if you want it to grow like a, a, a big bonfire sort of thing, you have to put a lot of wood in there. And that's the same kind of thing. You want to, to grow your name, you really have to be on it. I mean, I've seen, I've seen artists um, in different countries throughout the years, um, since even before I was born, done some research, whatever. And you see some artists with, with sort of skills that you, you look at and you're like, really? You know, and they're selling it for that much? But what they have that amazing artists may not have is um, the dedication. You know, the artists that make it, it's not about the skills. The artists that make it are the ones that are putting in the hours and that they are social, they're going to all the gallery shows, they're doing all, they're just, you know, present all the time. That's what you gotta do. You gotta realize that as an artist, Art is totally different to anything else. If you're a bad, a bad carpenter, you're not going to get any repeat work. If you're a bad actor, uh, depends. <laughs> you know, if you're bad, um, in most jobs, if you're bad, you're just not going to get any work. As an artist, you can do whatever and work your ass off on, on your PR, your, market, your marketing and all of that and do great, you know. So, I kind of think that you're, um, first of all, as an artist, to be successful, you need to be, um, you need to be, it's kind of split into, you need to be a businessman and an artist. If you were to be 95% businessman, 5% art, you would do some probably basic art, but you would, you know, sell really well. Um, so I tend to find if, um, I tend to find art is kind of for yourself, as opposed to uh, for, for selling, basically. Um, I love art and I want to do it. So that's why for me, it's kind of 50-50. It's kind of I have to be a businessman as well as an artist because otherwise I just can't pay the rent and all that. But at the same time, I couldn't just be all PR and oh, I've got to do that move, I've got to do this, I've got to do that in order for my name to grow and all that because my art would suffer. And I can't have my art suffering because I just love it so much. Woke up this morning at 6, first thing I did, I had a coffee, barely eyes open, and I was sketching. Because I wanted to. So, you want to find the balance. Obviously, if, you know, if you're not interested in the art side and you still want to be an artist, then that's up to you and you are going to do well. Again, the art is for you, the PR is for selling. So you need some of both. Um, and if you're a great artist, I mean, I've seen some amazing artists which are shit at PR and they're nowhere, you know, they're, they're not selling, they're, not, they're, they're working some dead-end jobs or whatever, and you see what they do and it's amazing. So you need a balance. You can't be too much of a businessman, well, you could, but then um, people are gonna look at your work and be like, mm, okay. Again, it's down to what you wanna do. And at the same time, you can't be an amazing artist with very bad social and PR skills because you're not going to live off being an artist. Okay, six. No, I touch on that. Okay, so now that, now that I've got the basics, it's, um, it's really down to how much effort you're willing to put in to your work. Um, I kind of find the main thing that you need to be a successful artist. I mean, I'm not successful yet. I'm, I'm a full-time artist. That's what I do for a living. Um, I don't have any other jobs. I've, I made the switch uh, quite a few years ago. All I do now is um, produce art, as in custom, and sell art, as in uh, canvases. But that's, that's what I do for a living. Uh, to, I'm getting sidetracked, <laughs> sorry. Yes. If there's one thing that you need to, to be a full-time artist, is to be disciplined. Discipline is the thing that will get you where you want to get to. Without discipline, forget it. You know, the, the, the art stuff, the, the business side, that's not going to work. You really need to be disciplined. Um, I've moved into a new place that's a bit more expensive than my previous place. I used to get up at 7 every morning, now I get up at 6. I still go to bed about 12. And I don't have a TV. I sold 
I saw my TV years ago, like six, seven years ago, because I was watching it too much. Um, I go out sometimes, but there's a massive chunk of my life dedicated to my work. It's not always going to be like this. Um, as you're going into, as you're going into art as a career or, or your other chosen career, you will find that sometimes you will have to say, "Ah, oh, you know, sorry, I can't go out. I've got to work." You know. But really, as soon as you hang up and you start working, you're like, yeah, you know. Um, like when the alarm clock rang, rings in the morning, I just, sometimes I wake up before because I'm like, oh, I'm about to go to that place and do that, you know, and do this kind of job and, and work for that company and go maybe take a plane and go paint somewhere. So there are so many perks, but it really takes a lot of dedication. Anybody can be an artist. Um, any, anybody can be a good artist and anybody can be a full-time artist as long as they have the discipline if you um if you're not willing if you are not willing to do what it takes you just can't be there can't get there um, and there's one thing as well that you need to know if if you decide to make a career out of being an artist the only thing that's standing standing in the way of you being a full-time artist and now is time. If you're not willing to give up, you are, you are going to become a full-time artist. And if you do well, you're going to be a successful artist. That's it. You know, loads of people are going to find, they, they're going to do it at first, like on, um, on the first, first of January, everybody's got all these resolutions, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And then it fades away and you only got maybe, I don't know, out of the population, you maybe got 2% of people that actually do carry on doing that stuff. Um, it's the same with this, you know, it's attractive at first, but then when people get, get through a few hurdles, they realize this is actually not as fun as I thought it may be, you know, this is a bit hard and stuff. And, you know, once you start doing well, then you get haters, you know, people are jealous about what you do and they don't like you because whatever. Um, and then you realize the tax things, you, you don't really understand that. You may be, you, you need to learn about this or get an accountant and, you get all these boring things that you don't want to do, all you want to do is work, uh, work on your art, but it's not really like that and some people fall off. But as long as you're not willing to give up, you are going to get there, you're going to become successful. If you look at, if you look in history, you know, you look at all the, um, the, the artists that you like, the, whether, whether the musicians or, or actors or all that stuff. I'm only talking about, you know, actors, singers and artists because this is kind of the field, the field I'm talking about. Um, if you look at all these people, sometimes one day, you know, they pop up and you're like, oh, they just, they just showed up, but you don't see what they've done, you know, in the past, in the, um, in the shade, like the Beatles, they used to practice kind of like three times more than everybody else. And they were on it all the time, all the time, all the time for years, and then suddenly, you know, they got out and, you know, they, they were all famous or whatnot. <coughs> Another misconception as well, people always think, oh, I just need to get a big break. There isn't such a thing as, um, as a, you know, a sketch and then one day, oh, I've got a big break. You have to be consistent. You know, it's kind of like life trying your patience <laughs> and seeing how worthy you are kind of thing. So you're going to get some lucky breaks, but they're not enough. You need loads and eventually you move on to doing some cool stuff. Um, but you need a lot of them. You don't need one big break. You need loads of small ones, and then eventually it kind of works. But they, they sort of get bigger and bigger as it goes. It doesn't just, you know, just appear like that. Um, also, okay, go a bit sidetracked. To sum up, what you need. First, you need to find out what you want to do and what's, what you're passionate about. Don't worry about how much money you need to get there to, to study and whatnot. Uh, if you're in this city, you want to get go to that city, uh, you have to go in that city, whatever. Don't worry about that for now. The first thing you got to do is work out what you want to do. That's the first thing. Say if you want to be an artist, you get your name up. I mean, you, you create a name, then you get the website, the business cards, the social, all that. So then you've got a kind of an online platform. After you've done that, you've got, you're going to have to do some free work. So then you can practice. And also, it's not really um, stressful because you're not really charging people. People will be cool. 
that's what you want at first. It kind of sucks, but you need to do it. I did a ton of work for free. I mean, I got played over and over at the beginning, but then as it, as, it, um, as you evolve, uh, you, you kind of don't you don't make the same mistakes again. When um, well, you do at first, but then you know, the the more you do them, the the, the, the wiser you get. Um, then you kind of see some patterns. You know, after a few years, when people approach you a certain way, say certain things. You kind of go, I've seen this before, I know how, how that goes, and then you can work in a different way and deal with them in a different way, you know, and work with that quote and, you know, whatever, you can adjust, so that's cool. So do some free work for now, get your skills up, um, then that's going to give you a lot of content to put on your website, your social, all that, and then also just realize that it's going to take a while it's just what it is you got to build up your name once your name is up and you keep working on it then you're just gonna you're gonna find it easier and easier to um to to make a living out of it it's kind of um when, when i started i was a carpenter i was kind of like a carpenter doing my art and then as it went I was doing more art less carpentry and then when i was ready i quit the carpentry and then i did um art full-time but um, I did it a bit too soon, <laughs> I was broke a lot of the time, but you know, if I can give you an advice, it's just get, uh, take your time when you decide to, to get rid of that one and then, you know, when you're switching, um, get a mentor, I got some mentors, uh, I got people I looked up to, you know, sometimes when, when times are hard, you can, you can look at those people, uh, times will be hard times sometimes would be very hard and trying a lot of people kind of tell you oh yeah do art is good or do this do that they don't tell you how much grind <laughs> is involved this is some bits are not pretty really really not pretty you are going to be working a lot um i love working and i love what i do so that's cool for me i love it but you're gonna have to put in a lot of efforts. Once you put in all these efforts, you've got loads of perks. You know, you're gonna be traveling to whatever country. Uh, when you get there, you treat it like, like a prince that, oh, we're so happy to see you. And you know, we got your hotel here and, and come, you're gonna meet this person and that person and you're gonna paint there. And, and these are the cans you ordered and this and that. And it's really cool. People are really, you know, enthusiastic. People really wanna work with you. It's, it's a really nice feeling. And obviously, because they're being so nice, you want to do your best. And um, so it's a win-win, you know, it's really cool. Um, yeah, and then it's kind of, you're getting paid to do your hobby, which is cool. I mean, sometimes people say, you work a 16 hour day or something, and you know, you don't have any days off, so whatever. And I'm like, well, what do you do on your day off? You know, they might say, oh, I sketch, I paint. Okay, cool, that's what I do for a living. You know, so it's, I'm always doing my, ho my hobby. It's, um, it's really fun. There are loads of perks. I mean, I can't think of too many right now because I'm tired. It was just at the workshop. Um, but yeah, no, there are really lo loads of perks. However, it does take a lot of, um, a lot of efforts on your part. And um, if you're willing to do that, as I said, and if you're not willing to give up, you are going to be successful and you're going to be doing this for a living. Um, I'm blabbing on again. I'm sorry. This is the first video of that kind I've ever done, so it might not be perfect. Um, I really, really love helping people. And um, if you've got any questions, just send me an email or just put in the, in the comments. I'll try to answer as, uh, as quickly as I can. And um, yeah, if, um, if, if I see that you've, you've got loads of questions, I'll do another like a follow-up on this, on this video and try to answer as much um, as much as much as I can yeah so I hope this was helpful to you uh, do feel free to leave a comment or ask me anything if I can help you I will and yeah have fun